Besides its rich wildlife habitats, this rural county is also proud of its food heritage and links to local provenance. Since that's something Fran and Andy are keen to sample when they move here, outdoors enthusiast and chef Chris Bax has invited our gastronomic couple to his 18 acres of private woodland to inspire them with ingredients directly sourced from nature. So here we are. Okay. This looks great. Wow. So we're going to cook some trout today. We've got mm -hmm. some lovely local trout. We're going to stuff it with some wild herbs mm -hmm. and then we're going to roll it in clay so it's in a parcel uh, yeah. Yeah. and then put that in the okay. embers of the fire. Okay. So let's go for it. So what we've got here is two different types of sorrel. We've got wood sorrel and sheep sorrel. So we're going to stuff those into the belly of the fish here. High in acidity, sorrel comes from the French word for sour. Sharp in taste, it was used as a precursor to lemons in British cooking. So next job is rolling out some clay. This is just normal clay. This has literally been um, dug out the woods. So we have a rolling stick. Lovely. Okay. okay. So if you want to roll that out, it wants okay. to be about a centimetre thick. You're going to have to work quite cool, hard. It's a, bit, it's a bit tougher than pastry. <laughs> you need muscles. You're in the country now. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. <laughs> That's good. I'll uh, maybe there. get in there. <laughs> He's but kindly going to offer oh. to help. No, no, I'm going to, just going to get in there a bit. Okay. This is a first for me. I've never seen anything cooked in a clay parcel. Does it keep oh. the moisture in? Exactly that, yeah. So it's like cooking, like the French would say, um, on papillot in a, yeah. in, a, in a paper bag. Yeah, yeah. Next up, Chris spreads salt across the clay. This separates the fish from the clay, but it also seasons it as it cooks. Then the trout is put in place and the clay folded over, much like a Cornish pasty, ensuring that all the small gaps are sealed. OK, so next thing, we'll get this in the fire. Okay. Wow. Not only are all of Chris's ingredients local to the area, but the clay also comes from this woodland. It's the same red brick clay widely seen in the buildings around the Vale of York, where Chris is based. So it's going to be in there sort of about 20 minutes to half an hour. All we need is a glass of wine. I've got an idea about that. Come on. Fran and Andy are lucky enough to be visiting in early spring, which is when something very special can be found in this woodland. So I, I thought we were going for a drink. What are we doing by a tree? We've got a drink here. Oh, what this kind is of tree a birch, is it? This is a birch tree. And for just two weeks a year, we can tap it and draw sap off it that we can use as a drink. Wow. The sap moves close to the surface of the tree, making it simple for Chris to harvest by creating a shallow two centimetre hole. He's mindful of his responsibilities of not taking too much so as to ensure the birch tree isn't damaged. And can we drink this now? Can we taste it? Yeah, well, let's drip some into your hand. We should okay. It's coming. There you go. It's like so precious. I know. It? Let me do this. There we go. Oh yes. Ah, that's good. It just kind of tastes <laughs> like, uh, like water. Very, very fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> Consumed in its purest form, birch sap lays claim to being rich in protein. Chris leaves his to ferment into wine. Back in the kitchen is a bottle that would go perfectly with the trout, which should be ready. You can actually smell the fish now. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's cracked. Yeah. Look at that. Incredible. And all the salt sticks to the uh, clay. Yeah, so it's all in there. So it will yeah. just, it will have seasoned the fish. But So I'm going to take the skin off because the skin has taken yeah. the clay and, the the clay and everything. And you can see it's still pretty moist. It's I think anything you cook over an open fire instantly smells beautiful. It's true. North Yorkshire is bountiful with wild food. It's, it's the most amazing place to forage. Perfect, perfect place to live if you're a foodie, I think. Foraging is a great way of eating natural foods, if you're equipped with the right knowledge. It's important to be guided by an expert, and if in doubt, don't eat it. Not disrupting local wildlife is also a key consideration. Mm. Mm, that's that lovely. Good. It's moist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. delicious. Yeah, it's flavoursome. It's a nice bite. Yeah, yeah, like a nice peppery bite to it. Before you eat all of it, we ought to have some birch wine with it. Oh. 2013 it was a wonderful year for birch. <laughs> Here we go to North Yorkshire. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Good luck with the house hunting. Thank Thanks. you very much. What a day. Cheers. Thanks.